today we are going over the vital signs of the horse. My horse that I'm using today is Star, and I have Patty as my handler. Patty is here to <laughs> Patty is here to help protect both me and the horse from injury. So Patty, I need you to stay on the safe side of me as the horse when I'm going around because I'm moving from the front all the way to the back of the horse. That way, since you're on the safe side, you'll be able to pull her head around in case she kicks out. So you just need to look out for both your safety, my safety, and the horse's safety. Okay, so for vital signs, you're going to need a stethoscope, thermometer, petroleum jelly, a towel, and something to time with. I have a watch on. It's the best way to go. You can also use a timer on your phone if you need to. So for the first vital sign, we're going to go over the mucous membrane, which is found on the inside of the eyelid, on the gums, and you can look at the vulva on a mayor. You want the mucous membrane to be a light pink color and moist. So if you look at her eye, you're going to pull down on the eyelid of the horse, and you can see the pink color. Good girl. And for the gum, you can see the pink on her, and you can see how it's moist. Good girl. So after you check mucous membranes, you want to check for... Um, easy. Easy. You want to check them to see if the horse is dehydrated, and it's going to be the capillary refill. And you're going to do that by opening and pushing on the gum so it turns white and releasing your thumb. When you do that, you're going to count, and you want the pink color to come back within one to two seconds. So I'm going to try this, and hopefully she'll stand still. Good girl. So hers came back right within two seconds. Good girl. The next way to check for... Um, dehydration, Patty, if you'll take a step back, please. Four. There you go. Is on the neck, and you're going to do a skin pinch test. This is done in a non-fatty area. You're going to pinch the skin and release it, and you want it to snap back into place within one to two seconds. So on Star, I'm going to do it right here, and it snapped back right away, so she's good. Um, on some mm -hmm. older horses, you can see that the skin isn't as... Um, flexible, and when you pinch it, it kind of stays standing for a little bit. If it's an older horse, then that's okay. Good girl. So now I'm going to do the pulse, and there are two places you can find the pulse. One is under the jaw, and then the other one, excuse me, Patty, is down here below the knee of the horse. So for the pulse, this is going to be the first thing that you need your timer for, and you're going to find the vein under the jaw, and you're going to hold it, and you're going to count that for 10 seconds, and then you're going to multiply whatever number you get by 6 to get the pulse rate per minute. Good girl. So her number was 6. So 6 times 6 is 36, and the average range you want is 32 to 44 per minute. So she's doing pretty good. And you want to remember that horses that are at rest are going to have a lower pulse rate than horses that are at work. Good girl. Next thing that I'm going to do is take the heart rate. And horses' heart rate and pulse should match up. And so the average heart rate is, once again, 32 to 44 beats per minute. This is going to be another thing that you need your timer for. And you're, once again, going to count for 10 seconds and then multiply that by 6. So she got six, so they do match. So once again, she's um, at 36 beats per minute. And the next thing I'm going to look at is gut sounds. When you do gut sounds, you have to look at four areas of the horse, the upper quadrant, the lower quadrant, and both sides. When doing gut sounds, you want to hear a noise in all four quadrants. And the ideal noise is like a gurgly sound. If you hear a pinging or no sound or a constant rushing sound, then the horse is having some digestive tract issue that you need to figure out and try to treat as soon as possible. So for her gut sounds, I'm going to pet her and let her know I'm back here, and then I'm going to turn and face the back of the horse so that I can watch her legs and make sure she's not going to kick me. And I'm going to place my ear up against her and listen. So I can hear like a gurgly sound and I can hear her gut really, really working. And I'm going to check the lower quadrant. So this quadrant has a little more action and you can hear the gurgling a lot better than the upper quadrant, but they are both good. And you want to make sure that when you're checking a horse who might be sick, that you do check all four quadrants. Good girl. The next thing I'm going to do is going to be the respiration. And respiration, you're going to time again for 10 seconds. 
And you're going to do this by looking at the side of the horse and putting your hand right on her flank so you can feel her in, out, breathing motion. And so for her, I'm going to count for 10 seconds. So she had two breaths in those 10 seconds, so two times six is 12. And the average respiration rate is going to be 12 to 18 breaths per minute. So she's doing really well. And like I said before, if a horse is being worked out, then they're probably going to have a higher respiration rate. And if they're standing here and they're calm and everything, the respiration rate should be lower. Good girl. And the very last thing I'm going to do is the temperature of the horse. And for the temperature of the horse, you're going to have your towel with you so you can wrap off, wipe off the thermometer. And you want to make sure that you use petroleum jelly because this helps allow the thermometer to go into the anus a little easier. And when you do, when you do this, you want to keep the thermometer out and use your finger and wipe petroleum jelly on the thermometer with your finger. This way you don't transfer as many germs and bacteria. And you want to make sure that you just get enough coated on there that it can go in. You don't want to completely flood the monitor with petroleum jelly. And so then I'm going to come to the back of the horse. I'm going to make sure my thermometer is on. And once it reads zero, I'm going to then pet the horse, let her know I'm here, pull, pick her tail up and pull it to the side. I'm going to insert the thermometer slowly and gently at an angle and make sure it's pressed up against the wall. That way it'll read the body temperature correctly. The average horse temperature should be 99.5 to 101.5. Once again, it depends on the environment of the horse. It may be higher or lower. So then once it beeps, you want to make sure that you gently pull it out. Good girl. And hers is 99.9, .9, so hers is pretty, a little higher than usual, but hers is normal. So then you're going to turn it off. You want to make sure you wipe it off first with the towel, and then you're going to pour alcohol over it and wipe it off again so it's clean. So those are our vital signs. Thank you.